Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. So, I made this video lecture to help each and every one of you na makapagsagot ng tama this uh, third grading. So, as you can see, while the time progressed, our lesson in English is also becoming more difficult. So, it is my goal and my aim uh, to help you overcome all of these uh, trials alone. And I hope that this video lecture will really help you as you answer the first lesson for uh, quarter three. So, let's begin. Wait muna ng konti. Yeah. And then let us have... Wait lang, but ayaw niyang mag ship mag yan. So, okay. I'm not going to show you my face anymore. I know you've known me and you've already watched my first uh, video lecture. So now, I want you to focus on my slide. Now, I have here a short or a simple picture. And I want you to ask yourself, what do you think is the meaning of this picture? Because this will give you an idea about the first lesson. So by the way, welcome to third grading period and the coverage of our third grading is from March 22 and that will be on Monday until May 8, 2021. So itong May 8 natin, tentative pa yan. Alam naman natin there are some uh, unexpected uh, events. Sana wag nang mag-lockdown or whatever. Pero sa timeline, target natin ay May 8. So we have uh, approximately two months to finish the third quarter. So welcome to lesson one, week one. That will last from March 22 to 27 and that will be on Monday until Saturday. Yes, until Saturday po ang ating classes. So that is our lesson one. So ano, nasagot mo na ba sa isip mo kung anong ibig sabihin ng picture na to? Can you guess now? So let me see if you're correct. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to. So meaning, ano daw yung in-expect ng teachers mo na matuturan mo at the end of this lesson, which is at the end of this week. So, eto na. I want you to read it with me. So, you're expected to learn MELT number 15 or Most Essential Learning Competency, which is use correct and appropriate multimedia resources when orally giving information, instructions, making explanations, and narrating events in personal or factual recounts. So, Maybe you're asking, ano ma'am yung multimedia resources? The one that you're seeing today is, a, is an example of a PowerPoint presentation. And this is also an example of multimedia resources. Now, if I, uh, later on, I'm going to upload this video on my YouTube, on my YouTube account. And when you access that through YouTube, that is also an example of multimedia resources. So we are using video lessons together with PowerPoint presentations. These are examples of multimedia. Now, aside from that, uh, you're going to give information. So there are lots of questions in this lesson that you're going to answer. Instructions means ikaw mismo ang gagawa ng mga questions. And then you're going to explain, you're going to narrate, or tell events in personal means sa sarili mong sa buhay or factual recounts or meaning pwede rin tungkol sa mga bagay na nangyayari sa paligid. Okay, day one Monday, syempre, reminder lang muna tayo, set time for your e-reader five minutes every day. So I know you're familiar with the e-reader. A lot of students failed to comply with that last grading period and I hope 
this wedding period, uh, you will take this seriously. Ano, nakakatulong talaga to to improve your reading comprehension skills. So, take time. Five minutes lang naman every day. Mag, uh, maglaan ka para ma-accomplish mo yung iyong e-reader sheet. And then, let's begin with the main lesson. So, letter A, introduction tayo. Ayan. During the second quarter, you learned that people are also sources of information. And an interview as a primary source is a way to gather information. So, bakit nabanggit dito yung second quarter? If you remember, there are lots of activities in the second grading that says, uh, as, so, let's say, as people... Uh, and find out what are the primary sources of information that they're using. Most of you answered, let's say, Tito. They use newspaper because they will. Uh, they are able to gather information without the use of internet. So those are examples and check yon. Now, ang naging struggle lang natin doon, ano, sa second quarter na yon. questions like that, should be original kasi nga you're going to interview ang ginawa ng marami ng opya sa Brainly so syempre sa Brainly siguro pag doon ka ng opya may mga 20 to more than pa ang makakaparehas mo and that is and that will never receive a highest grade dahil nga po kapid siya so dapat pag interview Original yan. Kasi imposible naman na yung sagot ng tatay mo, ay eh, yun din ang sagot ng tatay nung isa. ba? Or yung sagot ng kuya mo, yun din ang sagot ng kuya nung isa. So, make it realistic and original. Now, in this lesson, you will learn effective ways in conducting an interview. So, tuturoan namin kayo dito how to conduct your interview because you're Performance output here is an interview. Okay? Kailangan mag-i-interview uh, mag ka. And ano yun, ma'am? I-record ba namin yun? Let's find out later kung anong gagawin nyo. Observe the virtual interview below. Now, we have here an unfamiliar word which is virtual. Now, this word actually, gamit na gamit siya ngayon panahong ito because as you can see, we do not have face-to-face -face encounter. So, virtual siya because just like me, I am teaching you via internet. And you're hearing me, you're seeing me via internet. So, we have a virtual interaction. Ganon din naman ito. This is an example though of a virtual interview. I'm not going to read it. So, read it uh, with your... With your eyes, kung gusto mong basahin ng read aloud, mas maganda. So, you can practice your pronunciation skill. And as you can see, we have here a female and a male. They are talking about COVID-19. Palasak na palasak na sa atin yung topic na yan. Now, during an interview, whether it is face-to-face -face or virtual, asking the right question help you to get information from the interviewee, a person who is interviewed, okay? Add this word on your vocabulary, uh, sabi natin, vocabulary box inside your brain. If if you are the person who asked question, ang tawag sa iyo ay interviewer. If you are the one responding to that question, ang tawag sa iyo ay interviewee. Ayang a person who is interviewed. Okay? It also helps you develop your confidence since asking questions means you have to speak with people. Now, alam ko, there are many students or sabi na natin people in general who are afraid to speak. Kaya itong panahon na to, itong new normal, pabor na pabor ito doon sa mga tinatawag na bookish. Yung mga taong ayaw umimik at mas gustong magbasa at magsagot na mag-isa. However, this is not favorable to those people and students who wanted to work together with a group. 
Kaya madaming bumababa ang grade kasi masanay sila na may kasa nagtatrabaho sila or nagsasagot sila ng may kasama. Eh ngayon nga, you're going to work on your own, work independently. So, this is part of the changes that you you need to endure. But going back to our topic here, so to accomplish this, you must plan the interview questions carefully. So, bago ka daw mag-interview, ang sinasabi nito, iisipin mo muna kung anong gusto mong itanong. Hindi hindi yung uh, impromptu ka na magtatanong sa kanya, wala ka namang inaral. Okay, before the interview, I want you to read it. So, let me just read some infer important ideas here. So, first, know the person's background. Alamin mo kung sino siya. And then, second, make a list of questions regarding the subject. Mag magsulat ka na daw ng mga tanong. And, avoid asking questions answerable by yes or no. Now, why do you think it is prohibited in an interview? Bakit ba ako magtanong? Ang, let's say, crush mo ba si, si Sarah Hieronimo? O bakit ba ako itanong yun? Hindi dahil chismis. Kundi dahil ang sagot doon ay oo oh, o oh, oh, hindi. So pag sinagot ka hindi, then the interview stop. Kaya ang sabi doon, try asking open-ended questions. So, dapat daw ang iyong mga tinatanong ay open-ended. Pa paano mo malalaman na open-ended questions yon? By using five W's and H. Or, ang tawag natin sa lesson na to, WH question. So, look at these questions and I know you are very much familiar with them. We have who, what, where, when, why, and how. Tagalogin ko ano, sino, sa, sino, ano, saan, kailan, bakit, at paano. Then, sometimes they are not a question at all, but a statement meant to prompt a response. O so, minsan naman daw, hindi naman daw kailangan gumamit ng WH. Meron daw mga statement na nagpa-prompt ng, res ng response, like, tell me about you, let's say, tell me about yourself. Describe, tell, tell me more, etc. So, itong mga statement na to, usually nakikita natin siya kapag sumusulat tayo ng mga essay. Sabihin ng teacher mo, okay, describe your experience du uh, during last summer. So, eh, open-ended yan. Because your teacher is expecting you to narrate all the events that happened during last summer. Next, during the interview. So, halimbawa, kaharap mo na yung i-interviewin mo. As an interviewer, make your interviewee comfortable. So, dapat daw, komportable siya, komportable ka din, syempre. Be aware of your body language, make and maintain eye contact with your interviewee. So, bakit mam kailangan ko maging aware sa body language ko? Ano ba yung body language na yun? Ba't siya mahalaga sa communication? Now, in communication, we have what we call the verbal cues and non-verbal cues. When you say verbal cues, these are the words that is being conveyed in a communication. Ito yung mga sinasabi mo. Non-verbal cue, ito yung eye contact, hand gestures, body language. It also conveys information. Diba kapag may kaharap ka, or let's say may kausap ka, tinitingnan mo sila sa mata. Kapag yung kausap mo hindi makatingin sa iyo, ibig sabihin nagluluko yan or nagsisinungaling yan. Kapag naman yung kausap mo ay wala nang ginawa kundi uh, ipitin ang buhok sa kanyang tay nga, oh, di ba? Parang ganun malimit yung mga babae na nagpapakyot yan. So these are body languages. Ganun din daw pag if you are having an interview, avoid or be aware of your body language kasi baka ma-misinterpret ka na ini-interview mo. Next, take down notes by writing in a piece of paper or use a voice recorder if available. So, pag nag interview ka, dapat may hawak ka. Look at the drawing, ano, or the clip art. May hawak ka, hindi pwedeng, wala lang. Sa ulo ko to, ma'am. Pag may tinanong, sa ulado ko to. So, it's very, unless you have, unless you're a genius, probably, you can memorize everything. Pero, 
excuse me, if you're not that genius, kailangan may backup ka na paper and ball pen or paper and pen. Now, after the interview, let's say tapos na, summarize the main points of your interview, meaning you're going to read again, okay, ma'am, sir, this is what the, um, what you've told me a while ago. Sasabihin mo, babasahin mo lahat yung sagot niya. Why? Because sometimes, uh, baka meron kang hindi nahagip or ma mali yung iyong understanding. So, para may iwasan yung misunderstanding, it is important that you summarize the main points of your interview. And also, do not forget to thank the interviewee after you have asked all your questions. Okay? Tatanong mo na lahat ng gusto mo. Siyempre, ang last na sa gagawin mo ay magpa-thank you daw. Because that means you are being respectful and being polite, being grateful with that person who spend time with you. Now, these are the guidelines which you can put into practice to have a successful interview. Now, see module for the complete copy of the interview transcript. I'm going to give here the interview transcript. I mean, I'm going to give only the direction, not the, the whole interview transcript. I'm going to send you the copy of the, the whole interview transcript because you're going to use that as a springboard to answer all the remaining activities. So, ano yung direction dito? Says, read the transcript of a virtual interview between a student and a local expert. Observe the student's interviewer's question during the interview. So, may babasahin kayong dialogue, and that is between a student and Mr. Javier. Basahin lang ng ayos. And then, understand uh, what are they talking about. Pungkul ba saan talaga yung pinag-uusapan nila? Yun ang pinakamahalaga doon. And learning task one, which is five points. After reading the transcript, give a short summary of the interview. Like the example below, write your answer in your paper. So look at this. Short summary. Inaral natin to ng second quarter, lesson five, if I'm not mistaken. How to write a summary. First, answer the question, what is the topic? Ganun lang yung kasimple. Ano ba pinag-uusapan? Tungkol ba saan? And now, uh, common mistakes last second grading, gumawa ng summary, mas mahaba pa sa original. I remember I also made a video lecture on summari summarizing and I make it clear or I made it clear na a, a summary should be shorter than the original. Hindi pwedeng mas mahaba pa yung summary mo dun sa original. Kung ang original ay 10 sentences, then the summary should be 5. Kung ang original ay 5 sentences, a 3 sentence a summary will do. Hindi mo kailangan kopyahin entirely. And otherwise, it is not a summary. So, ganun daw ang gagawin mo, short. And now, you may begin, in this interview, the student asked Mr. Javier about Ayun na na, narinig na naman natin yung word na about. Miss tungkol saan. And then continue the sentence. Three to five sentences will do. Kaya nga, five points lang ang ating binigay dyan. Learning task two, ten points. In this task, you will list down three questions which the students used to ask Mr. Javier. Copy the table on your paper. So tingnan ninyo to. Students question, Mr. Javier's answer. So, sa left, isusulat mo ano yung mga WH question na ginamit nung student. And then, dun sa right, we're going to list down also the answers given by Mr. Javier. So, lahat naman lang yan, andun ang sagot sa uh, transcript. Saan ba yun? Yan, sa interview transcript. That's why it is very important that you read the interview transcript. Okay? Next, learning task 3. So again, recap lang tayo. Ha? Task 1 is 5 points. Task 2 is 10. So we have 15 plus 5 points at learning task 3. Copy and answer. Now, after, the, after reading the interview transcript, evaluate the interview based on the criteria below. 
check the box of each indicator if observed. Now, hindi mo ito matsatsikan kung hindi mo kukopyahin. Kaya kukopyahin mo para matsikan mo. Okay? Huwag tayong patama. Ang sabi, copy and answer, hindi answer only. So, let me explain this uh, interview questions. Sabi dito, the questions are interesting, open-ended, and engaging. Ang mga tanong daw ba na ibinigay ng estudyante ay nakakabuhay ng interes at hindi daw ba putol? Bakit putol? Yung yes or no, ang pag yes or no ang sagot, putol yun. Pag open-ended, ibig sabihin, the interviewee will uh, need to expand his or her answer. Next, the questions are all related to the topic or subject matter. Yun daw bang mga tanong, magkakaugnay daw ba siya? Let's say, for example, ang topic ay COVID-19. Yung bang pag-uusap nila tungkol lahat sa COVID-19 o may nabanggit pang iba? So, yun. Pay uh, attention to that. Next, the questions are designed to draw out information from the interviewee. Ito daw ba mga tanong ng estudyante ay ginawa para kumuha ng mga impormasyon mula kay Mr. Javier? O yung mga tanong niya ay eh, walang kakwenta-kwenta kaya wala din siyang napala. So, titignan niyo yun. Politeness or pagiging magalang. The student never interrupted or hurried the persons being interviewed. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Sometimes siguro nakapanood kayo ng isa sa TV, yung mga news anchor na nag-i-interview. Minsan, hindi pa tapos sumagot, may tanong na uli. O kaya naman habang nag-i-explain yung ini-interview, parang binabara na niya. Minsan, malimit yan kay Tulpo. So, tingnan, tingnan daw nyo. Ah, yung bang interviewee or interviewer ba? Hindi niya ba pinuputol at hindi ba siya nagmamadali? Okay? Next, the student think the interview of Uh, sorry, the student thank the interviewee after the interview. Nagpasalamat daw ba ang, um, ang nagtatanong or ang interviewer doon sa tinatanong sa interviewee? Now, eto na. After mong masagutan si task 1, si task 2, si task 3, you have 20 points. Tama? Kasi 5 plus 10 plus 5 is 20 points. Interview time, so this will be your performance. Yan. The first direction is, look for someone who is 10 years older than you. Kailangan 10 taon ang agot sa iyo. Ma'am, halimbawa 9 or 8, sige pwede na. Pero wag naman yung matanda lang sa inang isa, dalawang taon. Wag naman. Kasi under same, uh, parang same year bracket pa lang kayo. Next, interview him or her about his or her life or experiences in school when they were still young. So, ano yung itatanong mo? Chichikahin mo siya tungkol sa naging buhay niya noong siya ay elementary. So, kaya magandang interview nito yung mga tatay, nanay, kasi malayo yung agwat ng edad. And their, sabi-sabi na natin, customs, traditions, lahat ng meron noon ay iba sa meron ngayon. I remember, sa panahon namin, pag wala kang assignment, lalabas ka. Or pasusulatin ka ng five pages na I will do my assignment. Pero ngayon, punishable na yung by law. Kaya hindi na pwedeng magpagawa ng ganun. Okay? Number three, prepare the interview template in one clean sheet of paper. So meaning, ihiwalay mo to. Hindi mo ito isasama doon sa task 1, task 2, task 3. Ihiwalay mo daw siya. Write all the answers in the interview template. And take note, itong simpleng activity ito ay 20 points. So iba ito ha, 20 points siya. Ano itsura ng ating interview plan or interview template? Ito na yun. Uh, I encourage you to make it look like this. Kung mas mapapaganda mo pa, much better. Alam nyo, lagi nyo tatandaan yan, ang creativity ay minamarkahan din because it reflects a part of your personality. Ikaw ba ay nag-e-effort o ikaw ba yung basta na lang, basta may magawa? Okay? So, lalagyan nyo yan ng kaunting touch of yourself. Pwede mong pagandahin, kulayan, bahala ka ng dumiskarte. Interviewer, sino bang ilalagay natin doon? 
Siyempre ikaw, kasi ikaw yung nagtatanong. Interviewee, sino yung iyong tinanong? Purpose of interview, bakit mo siya i-interviewin? Ayun po ang sagot, nasa number two. Okay. And then, information, I know about the interviewee. So, dahil ako ang magcha-check niyan, or your teacher mo yung magcha-check niyan, syempre, hindi naman namin kilala kung sino yung in-interview mo. So, bibigyan mo kami ng background. Ano yung job position niya? Let's say, driver. Uh, ano pa? Vendor. Engineer. Doctor. Teacher. Bahala ka na. Workplace. Sa nagtatrabaho. Years in service. Gano na katagal. Others. Kung may gusto ka pang sabihin. And then possible questions. So, going back to this, ang iyong topic, experiences in school when they were still young. So, ikaw ngayon na mag-iisip, ano yung mga gusto mong itanong? Ano? Ang reminder lamang, again, it should be open-ended and it should begin with WH. And W and H. So, what are those uh, WH questions again? We have who? What, where, when, why, pwede ang which, at saka how. So, I gave you six WH questions. Lima lang ang iyong kailangan gawin. And then answers. Now, take note, dito sa ating questions and answer, it should be in complete sentence form. Do not ask uh, questions, let's say, who is your crush? Tapos ang sagot din eh, Miriam. Mali agad yun. Dapat, who is your crush when you were in, let's say, grade 1? Sinagot ka halimbawa ng tatay mo, my crush when I was in grade 1 is Miriam. So again, you have a complete sentence question and a complete sentence answer. Buo. Hindi fragment, hindi phrase ang ating isusulat dyan. Kasi interview, it, it's a formal interview. Okay? Next, copy and answer 10. So kanina meron na tayong 20 points. Ngayon plus 10 ulit sa 30 points tayo. Identify whether the question is effective or ineffective. Check the appropriate box in the first column. Then improve the question if it is ineffective, the first one is done for you as your guide. So again, hindi mo ito matsyatsikan kung hindi mo kukopihin. Kaya ang nakalagay ay copy. Okay? So pag effective means tama, ineffective, mali. Something like that. Now look at the example. Is running nose a symptom of COVID-19? Yung running nose, hindi yung literal ha, na tumatakbo ang ilong. Ibig sabihin, ang ilong ay nangangate. Kapag daw ba nangangati ang ilong, simptomas daw ba siya ng COVID-19? So, kung itatanong to sa iyo, most probably you will answer yes or no. And again, going back to our guidelines a while ago, yes or no questions are a big no-no in an interview. Hindi dapat natin tinatanong yan. So, dahil ito'y answerable by yes or no, ang sagot ay ineffective. Now, ang sabi dito sa direction, then improve the question if it is ineffective. Okay? Pag daw ganitong ineffective ang sagot mo, babaguhin mo ngayon ang tanong. Paano mo siya gagawing the uh, open-ended or WH question? So, ang ginawa ng ating uh, student or writer natin ito, ginawa niyang what are the most common symptoms of COVID-19? So, let's say, I asked you this, that question. You will answer me in a complete sentence. Or magiging sagot diyan ay most probably ay the most common symptoms of COVID-19 are fever, flu, headache, etc. Now, hindi niya naman talaga kailangan sagutin yung tanong. What I am trying to explain is kapag open-ended ang question or kapag mahaba ang sagot sa tanong, that is effective. Kapag yes or no ang sagot, that is ineffective. Now, there are five questions. Hindi ko nababasahin. Kayo na magbasa. I believe ito naman ay madaling intindihin. Kaya nyo na yan. Okay, final task. Five points. Ito na. 
reflection. Then and now. The word then means before and then now. Reflect on what you learned from the lesson by completing the sentence below. The first one, I used to think blank. Second one, but now I think blank. Pag sinabi natin, I used to think, look at the word used, may D. So past tense yan. Ano daw dati ang pagkaunawa mo sa pag-i-interview? Ano yung dati mo nang alam? Pero ngayon, matapos mong mapanood itong video lesson na to, matapos mong gawin itong mga activities na to, ano daw naman ang iyong natutunan? Or ano yung iyong nalaman? Kaya then and now, noon at ngayon. Okay? What did, what did you know and what you know now? Five points yan. So let's go back to our score guide. Quizzes natin, total of 35 points. And uh, let me reiterate this again to you. Quizzes po ay 40% lang of your English grade. Performance natin, 20 points. Kahit 20 points lang yan. Performance is equivalent to 60% of your grade. So alin yung 20 points na yun? Ito yung interview template or yung interview plan. So, meaning, sa lesson 1 pa lang, you have a total of 55 points. If you're going to look at it in, the, in, our, in my class record, that will be comprised of two columns. One column under quizzes, one column under the performance. So, uh, please again, gawin natin lahat ng ating activities para hindi tayo naiiwan. Kasi usually, itong performance column ang ini-skip nyo. Pag dito kayo nag-skip, napakalaking epekto sa inyong marka. Wala kayong pagbabawian yan. Kasi kita nyo ba, kahit 20 points yan, isa lang yung activity. Samantalang kanina dun sa quizzes natin, if I'm not mistaken, we have 5 activities. So maraming pagbabawian. Okay? Mahaba ba ang lesson 1? I believe not. And I believe you can do the you can do this kung hindi pa maintindihan kahit taglish na explanation ko as someone at home, your brother, your sister, your friend, your parents, your grandparents, anybody who can help you. Okay? That's all and uh, I will be seeing you again on our group chats. You can ask me and reach me on our group chat. That's all. Have a good day.